Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the DTM Esports Super Finale Extravaganza, whatever you want to call it. We're excited. It is going to be fantastic. My name is Luke Crane, and I am joined by Connery Maddock. How are you feeling about this today, Connery? Uh, I don't know if I'm completely and utterly prepared for what we're about to see, because this is going to be an absolutely fantastic event. The best talent from loads of different sims here in the broad world of sim racing here coming here on one platform uh, to race for a major prize that is set to be incredible yeah absolutely some of the best drivers from a team such as coanda uh, red bull racing we have got some of the very best in the world here on race room for some dtm action it's going to be really really exciting and also they're going to be battling out for fifteen thousand euros like that is not to be sniffed at it's not to be sniffed at at all. And it's not often that we actually get to see this with uh, you know, sim racing being as spread out across all different sims, all different games as it is. We don't often see the top competitors from each sim actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the same platform. And of course, this being race room, maybe that gives a little bit of advantage to the race room natives, as I'm going to be saying, for, like some Moritz Lowe and Jack Heathley. But uh, it's going to be a fantastic event nonetheless, and we might even get to see a sign of uh, perhaps who is really the cream of the crop when it comes to sim racing. Absolutely. The level, though, is the DTM 2020 cars. But here's an explanation of what's going to be happening this evening. There's the explanation video. It sent chills down my spine again. Some of the very best racing at two fantastic circuits, Suzuka and Daytona. Connery, which one are you looking forward to the most there? And what are the characteristics and the differences between the two circuits? They're two very, very different circuits, aren't they? Suzuka, one of my favorite circuits in the entire world. Very technical, very twisty in parts, an absolutely stellar first sector with the SS, SS section coming up the hill. Uh, it's going to be a very, very technical circuit for these drivers. But then you head to the opposite track of Daytona, where it's more of a strategy game uh, with the draft. When, when and where do you make those passes? When and where do you want to be in those sorts of uh, advantageous track positions? And uh, where do you want to be when it comes to the start of that final lap with the draft being so potent? I'm, I'm more looking forward to Suzuka, but I think Daytona can throw up a surprise. I think Daytona is like a wild card, isn't it? You know, with the slipstreaming, uh, of course, it does have that uh, back straight, chica back straight, back oval chicane. But <laughs> I think Daytona is surely going to be a leveler. Yeah, I think so as well. It's the great equalizer. The draft, the great equalizer here in this one. Of course, we'll see how it uh, affects things, even with the driver aids that you have in these DTM cars with the uh, with the DRS push to passes. Those are going to play a major factor in that race uh, at Daytona at the end of the day. So uh, it's just another strategy element that gets added to an already strategic track. We have an unbelievable battle between Moritz Lerner and Jack Keefley for the DTM Esports crown. They will both be racing uh, but they will be joined by some of the very best sim racers. Who are you looking forward to the most? Obviously, Connor, you come from an iRacing background. There's mm -hmm. a few of your boys there that you'll be rooting for. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Coanda Sim Sports, uh, a very, very prominent team, uh, especially in iRacing, showing up with a majority of their top drivers in the top competition in iRacing, the the uh, the iRacing Road World Championship. Uh, you have uh, Joshua Rogers, you have Tommy Ersgaard, Mitchell D. Young as well, who's known to be a very adaptable driver, given that he's racing in the in some rallycross and also doing some oval on iRacing as well. So he is going to adapt very quickly here uh, into the racing that we get to see in these DTM cars on race room. But I'm also, uh, you know, eyeing up some of the other drivers from some sims that I'm, I perhaps aren't used to. Uh, we got Robin Becker, Aurelian Mallet, Mallet from the uh, from the Forza side of things. Uh, we got Nils Nujox, the sim racing head of G2 Esports, uh, who had some recent success in the SRO Esports Championship on a, a set of Corsa. So rolling back the years is going is now, to... Jocks. Yeah, yeah, uh, rolling back the years. He is, uh, he's he's. Well, one of those veterans, shall we say. I'm not trying to make him uh, feel old, but no, if he I is do, old. I'm sorry, Nils. 
<laughs> he is old. Like, there's no good two ways about it. Uh, Nils uh, now jocks is old. Uh, but yeah, again, he's uh, one of the. When I first got involved in sim racing many, many moons ago, he was uh, right at the peak of his powers and all of a sudden he's just magically back at the top level uh, as well. But again, he is mm. going to be partnered with some of the very best drivers from Red Bull Esports. You just mentioned there, uh, Aure Aurelian Malay, uh, who I think is pound for pound the best sim racer in the world. I have said this for a couple of years now. Uh, him and potentially James Baldwin, for me, are the best two out there across multiple different sims. Uh, is there anyone else you're looking forward to seeing today? Yep, the F1 esports drivers, especially those guys, uh, Michael Romanidis, and we'll see Jano Opmir as well uh, from the F1 esports rosters, from Williams esports and Veloce esports, respectively. Leading. I'm very interested to see what they can do, uh, especially considering this is not an open wheel car. So let's see. Yeah, Jano Opmir leading the F1 esports currently. He's been uh, in stunning form for Sauber esports. But anyway, Thomas Bienna, unfortunately, is not going to be able to do interviews today because uh, he charged too much of a fees, uh, wanted too much money after his exploits over the last few weeks. So you're going to be stuck with me, unfortunately. So let's head over to me, who's going to be talking to Robin, uh, who is Box, Box, Box from Red Bull Esports. Robin, how you doing? Robin, how you doing, buddy? Oh, okay. So it's uh, Nicodem. How you doing, Nicodem? Hello. How you feeling, yeah, fine. bud? Yeah, all good. I mean, uh, I didn't uh, get much practice before that event, but I think it's going to be really uh, nice fun, especially on the Daytona with going with the sleeve stream. So looking forward to it. So you're already getting the classic sim races excuses out there with the, I've not practiced enough, uh, the force yeah, feedback's yeah, not quite right. right. Yeah. <laughs> what are you but looking forward to the most have, today? Uh, basically, we have tomorrow uh, ADAC, the last round. That's why I'm focused on the on the audio series. Uh, I think I would aim for top 10 today. So top 10 would be nice for me, especially that field is so close and so tough that I think top 10 is quite a nice achievement anyway. Absolutely. Why not? And that just goes to show where sim racing has, been, has come from, you know, uh, having two major competitions battling out for some unbelievable prizes on the same weekend. Like when I first started involved in sim racing and when you were first involved in sim racing, we'd be waiting months between competitions. So it uh, just goes to show how great the growth is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's really nice that we have so many competitions right now. Uh, sometimes it's just too much, you know, to it's better to keep focus on one competition and make it uh, um, really good for you uh, instead of doing you know a lot and struggling uh, everywhere. Uh, but yeah, there, there is so many competitions, so many prizes that it's shame to to not participate anyway. Absolutely. Well, wish you the very best of luck and go out there and get that dub. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there you go. Seems uh, really calm and composed there, Connery. Uh, I was shocked there because I was supposed to be talking to Box from Red Bull Esports, but there you go. Uh, that's just that's live television for you. What can you do about it? But yeah, he seems yeah, pretty well... relaxed. He seems pretty excited. And um, again, representing a team such as Williams, you know, he's he's got it all uh, in his locker anyway. Yeah, and Williams, of course, finding success uh, here in Race Room recently with Moritz Lerner winning the main DTM Esports Championship for this season. So they're coming off on a high. Hopefully that rubs off on, on Wisniewski. Of course, he, he, he got second place in the um, WTCR Esports uh, Championship as well. So uh, a, a ton of experience uh, here on Race Room. It, uh, it can be said, you know, he has, his, uh, has also his teammate there, Jacob Brzezinski. That's uh, always a potent figure as well. So... Uh, Williams Esports just as a whole are going to be firing on all cylinders coming into this one. Yeah, well, they were both actually racing in the BenQ Challenger Cup final last week as well. So they have just got so much talent to be going across three different games at the same time. Like, absolutely phenomenal. But, you know, <laughs> let's talk about the the big dogs, I guess, from Williams Esports again. And it's our champion, Moritz Lerner, and of course, Jack Keefley, those two who gave us a hell of a show on the finale, gave us a hell of a show for all three weeks. I'll be expecting to see them two at the front end again today. Oh, it, it would be some poetic justice if we actually get to see a grandstand finish between those two, since we were robbed of it during the during the regular season uh, in that final round. You know, we were hyping it up, but unfortunately, second turn, nothing that Keithley could do about it. Got punted off by a car that also got themselves punted into as well. So it's uh, uh, it was an unfortunate situation, but this might, might be some unfinished business here today between those two. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I spoke to Jack last week, actually, and he was um, he was pretty relaxed about it. And like I've just spoken there with Nico, it's a case of a, a few years ago, you'd have had to wait three, four months, maybe even half a year to get to the next event. Now there's just an event every <laughs> single week. They've got no time to indeed be thinking about it. So again, opportunity here for Keith Lee to go one up on Moritz Lerner, but there are so many other drivers. And well, first of all, let's check out the circuit that will be race number one, and that is Suzuka. Hey guys, Moritz Lerner here, DTM Esports Champion 2020. Um, today I'm gonna show you the two tracks we drive in the DTM Super Final, and we start off with Suzuka. Welcome to the track presentation at Suzuka for the DTM Super Final. Um, try to get a really good exit on the last chicane um, to get as much speed as possible for the long straight. Um, also stay on the outside to again gain as much speed as possible for yeah the start finish straight. And um, turn one approaching, tap the brake on the 50 meter board and go to fifth, down to third for the turn two. Early on the throttle to get the rotation a little bit. Stay in fourth for the start of the SS. Second and fourth as well. Then shift down to third. Stay on the inside on the left. And here it's very important to stay on the inside on the right. Then short shift to fourth, just before going up the hill. Um, be careful on the throttle because the rear tries to step out on you very easily. Then approaching the fast right-hander, down to fourth, over the curb. Try to use the curb on the next right turn as well. And yeah, accelerating out of it. Then we come to the hairpin. In fourth, down to second. Very slow corner. Um, get the, the car straight as early as possible to go onto the throttle as early as possible. That will gain you a lot of time. And this is the place where you want to use uh, push to pass. Then approaching spoon. Um, down to fourth, very very fast e e entry. Down to third, um, stay on the inside and here again early on the front to get the rotation and on the rear. And yeah, back straight, um, approaching 130R, one of the fastest corners in motorsports. It will be flat out in the DTM car. And last chicane, braking at the 150 meter board, down to second. Be careful on the braking into the chicane, out of it, and stay on the very right-hand side of the uh, of the track to uh, minimize the distance you have to go until the start-finish line. And that's your lap at Suzuka. So this was the lap at Suzuka. Uh, very challenging. I hope you enjoyed it. And now enjoy the race. He makes me sick. He's so good at sim racing. He's also got a ginger beard like I have, and he's just a beautiful human. He, it makes me sick. He's got everything, that young man. Um, so there you go. There's a lap of Suzuka Connery. Uh, again, one of the most famous circuits in the world of motorsport. The only annoying thing for me from that lap was the number in the windscreen was covering up the apex, which is a, a, I don't know, really annoying for me. I must have a bit of a complex there. But who better to take us on a lap of Suzuka than Moritz Lerner again? Can he go and get a double win this season? He's certainly one of the favorites to be able to take everything at the end of the day, isn't he? But like I said, just before we went to that segment, Jack Heathley has some unfinished business. And who knows from the rest of the other sim races, from different sims, from different games, if they can put in a great performance here in these two races, then we could be saying uh, that uh, someone else isn't that isn't Mars Lona or Jack Heathley will take things at the very end here. So uh, that would be a very big surprise. But considering that final round of Daytona, you know, anything can happen. But it starts here at Suzuka. Yeah. And uh, just to clear up the interview situation, they are all so focused on the drivers here, which is good for us because it means they're all taking it very, very seriously. But actually, Robin didn't respond to any questions. He didn't want to talk. <laughs> He's just like, ah, I want to do qualifying. I'm not getting involved with that. So, yeah, thank you for uh, Nick and them there for indeed getting involved with the conversation, helping us out ever so slightly. But we are very, very close, of course. It's great to, uh, you know, hear me and Connery and see us on camera. We want to see the qualifying action. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, as we are on board with Team Red Lines, Kevin Siggy. Yep, so qualifying is underway. Of course, points are in offer here in qualifying. It goes by the usual 
DTM uh, sort of point standings here. So top three in qualifying will get themselves uh, points towards their total. Three points if you finish first in qualifying. Se second place gets two points. Third place gets one point. And you might think, well, those are very minor points. Uh, they possibly don't matter. But in a championship that and a, an event in particular, that as, could be as close as this one's going to be, then those single points really, really do matter. So it's important to get a good result here in qualifying, not just for your track position at the very start of the race. Yeah, absolutely. Race one, you have a bad race one. That is competition over. That is a fact that will happen, and uh, there's no messing around. And there is no driver in this grid that's going to feel sorry for you either. They're battling out for money. They're battling out for fame. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, I guess fame. And they're battling out for their teams as well. They're representing some big organizations today as well, which is fantastic. Uh, again, Kevin Siggy, uh, I was talking about pound for pound races. He is one of the very best as well. Uh, he was the champion of the McLaren Shadow Project last year. Uh, he has also won the Formula E Race From Home Challenge this year, uh, which was full of some of the very best drivers in the world. Lucas Muller, actually, uh, and Yuyovsky, they both took part in that at some stage or another. Lucas Muller took part of all of them, uh, and it was indeed... Um, Yuyovsky took part in one race at the start. So, yeah, some of these drivers have been taking part in multiple big organization or organized events. And you can see here, they're all just trying to get a bit of space on circuit. And with only eight minutes of qualifying, it is vital that they get their laps done as soon as possible. Yeah, not a lot of time to get your laps in here. You saw all the drivers stacking themselves up, coming towards the Cassio Triangle, just trying to find their own little space. Uh, to be able to get these clean flying laps in will uh, just be, well, another lap away from getting ourselves the first signs of where things stand here in qualifying as we watch Jack Heathley uh, head his way through the S's section for the first time in the Audi. The Brits narrowly losing out in the DTM Esports Championship to Moritz Lohner, but uh, he could gain a big prize here today with those uh, 15,000 euros on offer. He'll definitely want to rob that out of the hands of uh, Moritz Lerner especially. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't mind robbing the hands of Moritz Lerner if he's going to be holding on to it, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> we get nothing of that money. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but four minutes, 40 seconds to go, and it's a purple sector then for Keithley. Half the grid would have gone through the first sector, so we may see that change as more and more drivers do indeed come through there. As they come through uh, Kobayashi Corner, and now they head then up in towards Spoon for the very first time. And well, this looks a very tidy lap indeed here. Seems like he's uh, absolutely on the limit with the car. You're going to use an every inch of the curb as well. So normally you'd say to these drivers, or you'd hit see from these drivers more to the point, is that they would just be off the pace ever so slightly just to make sure they get a lap time in because, of course, eight minutes is a very short time period. And for other sims, when they cross the line, they get to finish the lap time. But on uh, race room, Unfortunately, once they cross the line, once the eight minutes is elapsed, that's it, you're done. Uh, the qualifying session is over, so it just makes it even more important here. And as you can see then, Keith Lee, green, green through sector one and sector two. So there's drivers in behind that are going faster, but this is going to be a very good bank of time. That is for certain. Yoyoski's done a 46.8. Uh, he could be a dark horse today, but as they cross the line then, what sort of time are we looking at here then from Keith Lee? It's half a second off of Yoyoski, and Yoyoski's put a worldy time in as a banker. That is a brilliant time with a 146.884 for Erhan Jojovski. We see Sheldon van der Linde head his way across the line in the BMW uh, to try and secure his place on the starting grid here today. At least put in a, uh, a bit of a bank elapse. Uh, tries to uh, set that time, and I think it does come through P16 just briefly before he slides down the order. But what a lap time there from Erhan Jojovski. Two and a half tenths of a second faster than Tim Yarshell's effort. So it's the two BMWs at the very front of the qualifying order, but we've still got at least one of those flying laps to go for each driver. Yeah, absolutely. We're on board there with Sheldon van der Linde, one of the most beautiful men in, in the world of racing, not just motorsport, but sim racing. Yes, I may have a slight man crush on the man, but it is what it is. <laughs> what can you do? He's a smoke show. What can I say? Uh, but Yajovski then leading out here with that 46.8. Yarshal then, uh, both of these were in the DTM Esports, but then look at this, Kevin Siggy, like I said, one of the pound for pound best esports drivers out there right now. Joshua Rogers, again, very much the same. Uh, uh, he has been a Porsche Cup champion, which you know all about, Connery. That's probably, for me, the hardest championship to win in, the, in any form of sim racing. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very competitive series, that one. And uh, to even get close towards the top couple of positions, you really have to be on the top of your game. And Josh Rogers hoping to bring that sort of performance here 
into race room in the uh, DTM Esports Super Final. Moritz Lona, your winner from the regular season here in DTM Esports, comes across the line, but I don't think it's going to be two. pole position. It's going to be P2, uh, but it's still a one and a half tenths of a second gap to Yoyovsky. Yeah, that's a really good time, though. And again, he'll probably be looking to just be ahead of Keithley, which he is because Keithley's just gone up to third. But it's two tenths of a second off the pace, and they, again, they will all just get one more lap in. But as soon as it goes to round about the one more minute 46 left remaining, that will be it for everybody here. We go a little bit further down, then Brzezinski just moved up to P6. Uh, Joshua Rogers, then seventh position ahead of Nestor Garcia. Uh, then we've got Nils, no jokes, now Yox. Uh, he's currently in ninth position. Gergo Boldy, then, who's a bit of a race room specialist in the BMW as well. Top 10. Sanchez in 11. Romanidis, then, is in 12th. It's a it's like a Red Bull Racing Kawanda Williams takeover. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's the case. As uh, Oh, yeah, Yovsky is saying a very, very good sector one. He might be able to improve his time at the very front of the qualifying all the moment. Rudolf Rin uh, heading his way across the line now. P25 for the moment. And, well, any position gains here would be helpful uh, for the driver of that BMW, but not going to improve in this instance as uh, things are really heating up, especially inside the sort of top five positions where drivers are only a couple of hundreds of a, ten hundreds of a second away from each other uh, uh, on those front couple of rows of the grid. I'm telling you now, Erhan Yoyovsky's head's been photoshopped onto that t-shirt. That is no way a real picture <laughs> of him. That is hilarious. Um, but again, I met you, Erhan last year at the McLaren Shadow Finals. Uh, again, one of the very best in the world of sim racing. I keep saying that about a lot of these drivers, and it is very much true here. As Yoyovsky there loses the rear of the car, that will be uh, done for him. So he's on the limit, and he's gone purple, purple. He would have gone faster, but that mistake then into the final chicane is going to cost him, uh, unfortunately. But here we go then. Yoyovsky, by the looks of it, a 146.884 is going to be the pole position, and he showed glimpses of this in the eSports Championship that he is someone who can be right at the front there. He is someone that could be the one to beat, but just wasn't able to be consistent enough across the championship. Yeah, well, if there's a time to become just that little bit more consistent, it would be now just two brilliant races, two brilliant qualifying sessions, and he could be crowned the championship, uh, crowned the champion of this super final at the end of the day. But maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I got to say, some of the representatives from some of the other sims have really gotten up to speed very, very quickly, uh, making impressions inside the top five, inside the top ten as well, with New Jocks, Rogers, uh, you know, a couple of the other drivers, Romanides having a good run or decent run there in qualifying as well. It, it it just goes to show that these skills are very much transferable between games and between sims. I'm going to be, I'm going to throw this out there right now, Connery. I think this is the strongest sim racing grid I have ever been involved in commentating. <laughs> I don't, not sure about you, but I genuinely believe this is the strongest grid I've ever commentated on. Yeah, I, I think so. Just because of the broad representation that we have here, you know, like I said at the top of the show, we don't often get to see uh, sim races that are top of their respective sims come onto one sim and one platform to try and figure out who's the best, at least on this platform. So it's uh, uh, it's absolutely crazy, and I definitely agree with you. This is probably one of the stronger fields that I've ever commentated as well. Yeah, and I'm going to throw it out there. I think it's the best looking field I've ever commentated on as well. And I'm just, you know, <laughs> what can I say? When I first got involved in sim racing, I mentioned for the third time, like, you know, you, you could be anything, but now they've got to be fit. They've got to be agile. They've, you know, the whole landscape of sim racing has changed now. It's very similar to, you know, being in the real world of motorsport now. You've got to keep yourself in good trim. Um, you know, that helps the reactions. It also helps you get, gain some pace. Yeah, it does. And someone like Niels, Niels Neldux, for example, will be very well aware of that. He's the head of the show when it comes to G2 Esports Racing, Red Bull Racing Esports. Of course, they have that slight partnership there. So it's uh, it's absolutely, he's definitely someone that's well aware of that. A lot of the top drivers in this field are very well aware of that as well, as you'll see the qualifying results. Yeah, there we go. So Erhan Yuyovsky will take pole position. Joshua Rogers in second, Moritz Lerner and Jack Keithley then in third and fourth. Tim Yarshall is in fifth with Kevin Siggy then in sixth position. Jacob Brzezinski is in seventh with Nestor Garcia then in eighth. Nils uh, Naujoks, who I believe dyes his hair because there's no way he's got that dark hair his age. <laughs> Gogo Boldy then is in P10. David Nagy is in 11th. Alejandro Sanchez is in 12th. Then we've got Ben Spanky, Nikodem Wisniewski, Lucas Muller, Robin Betka, Mitchell de Jong, Tim Heineman. We've got Peo Peev. We've then got Tommy Ostergaard, uh, Aurelian Male, Joe Hudonchi. Uh, We've then got Sheldon van der Linde, Rudolf Rin, and Jano Opmi, who didn't get a lap time in. And if there's anyone, well, if there's any reason to watch this, 
uh, other than the fact that we've got the unbelievable grid. Yano Opmir coming from 26th on the grid and potentially coming through the pack. That is absolutely going to be worth a watch. Yeah, definitely keep an eye on him when it comes to this uh, this start here. If he can gain a handful of positions on the start, that'll be a great position for him to be in. Gives him that sort of positive attitude to go even further, even deeper into the race and get those overtakes done. Well, now let's go and have a little listen to some messages from our partners. In der Boxengasse werden die letzten Vorkehrungen getroffen. Volle Konzentration bei den Piloten. Die Spannung steigt ins Unermessliche. Ein fulminanter Start. Zwei Piloten liefern sich ein knallhartes Kopf an Kopfrennen. Ich glaube, mein Schwein pfeift. Sie schmeißt den Turbo an, hebt ab und fliegt als Erste ins Ziel. Auf die Pole Position. Das klingt nach mega Gaming Spaß. Hol dir den perfekten Sound mit der JBL Quantum Gaming Headset Serie. Jetzt online auf mediamarkt.de slash dtm. Also gib Gummi, Mediamarkt. So we've uh, done all of the talking. We've got all of the, uh, the initial adrenaline out of the way. We're excited now for the actual racing action. That is what we are here for. Uh, just to clarify, it did show on the previous graphic that there was double points added. It is not a double points day. So it's three points, two points, and one point for first, second, and third in qualifying. And then it is DTM points for the race. And while Connery, you know what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to ask for your prediction. Oh, this is going to be a, a very, very tough one. Erhan uh, Yoyovsky, of course, pole position, puts himself in a great uh, point in this race to to be able to take it at the very end. But he's got such a, a huge complement of drivers, of competent drivers behind him that can really take a race win on a good day. Uh, you know, Yashal is up there as well, and he's shown some uh, aggression during the regular season as well. Uh, I think Yashal could potentially actually come away with this one uh, unless uh, Yoyovsky holds on to this momentum during the race. And you thought that was a long prediction. That is the shortest one Connery's done so far this season. Um, my prediction, <laughs> I think the viewers and the fans are the real winners here because they get to witness 26 of the very best drivers in the world go toe to toe, battle it out for 15,000 euros. Some of the best real world drivers as well. I'm just super, super excited for this. We are very shortly going to be heading into the warm up, but if I'm going to put my hat onto somebody, I'm going to, yeah. Look, I mentioned Erhan so many times during the esports that <laughs> I thought eventually it's going to come true. I'm going to say Erhan Yoyovsky. I think he's got enough just to get the job done here today. Uh, I'm just excited. Again, like 26 are the very best. I feel like this is genuinely maybe even stronger than the DTM esports championship. I'm not going to lie here. Like, I, I feel like the DTM esports championship was unbelievable, but this grid of 26 is, it is the who's who of sim racing. Yeah, I would say the top 10 of the DTM Esports Championship was an absolutely fantastic uh, roster of drivers. And now we just add in all the top talent from the other Sims and other games into that already amazing uh, roster, or at least a, a part of that already amazing roster of drivers, then it's completely potentially unknown what happens here today, you know, especially when it comes to this race, because not all drivers are, are very good on their one lap pace. So some of them have a little bit better race pace. So we might even see some drivers from deeper in the field, get themselves to the forefront of this. And then everything's up in the air. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. So we're just about to then take a little look at the grid. And there you go. It's Erhan Yoyovsky on pole with Joshua Rogers in second spot. Morris Lerner and Jack Keefley then going to duke it out once again from the second row. Tim Yarshall and Kevin Siggy are in fifth and sixth position. They've got Jacob Brzezinski in seventh and Nestor Garcia in eighth. On the fifth row, then it's Nils Naujox and Gergo Baldi. David Nagy and Alejandro Sanchez in 11th and 12th. Michael Romanidis and Bent Banky in 13th and 14th position. Nikodem Wisniewski and Lucas Muller in 15th and 16th. We then got Robin Betka and the Mitchell de Jong. 17th and 18th. Tim Heinemann and Peo Pev on 19th and 20th. And then we've got Tommy Ostergaard and Aurelian Malay in 21st and 22nd. Joe Hoon Chonji and Sheldon van der Linde are 23rd and 24th position. So that is your 12 rows of the grid. 
And well, we are in the warm-up phase here for the race. I just want to do a little mention to Movember. If you've just seen the monstrosity that is on my face, ladies and gentlemen. Well, basically, it is just to get people talking about men's cancers. So if you want to go and support the charity, then indeed go to Movember. Just type Movember in Google, and indeed you can support that. And also grow a tash. If you could grow one, unfortunately, Connery can't. But if I'm growing one for the both of us at this point. But yeah, it's now time for the DTM eSports Super Finale here. Suzuka is the home. And on pole position then, it will indeed be Yoyovsky. And well, Joshua Rogers has actually got a pretty poor start here, which should open the door here for Lerner already. Lerner has got off nicely here. It's a, well, it's a big sandwich then. Jack Keefley beating the meat in the sandwich then. And well, down into now fifth position for Joshua Rogers. Not able to get that car started here at all. Yashul's dropped down as well. And look at Keefley. Keefley up to the S's here. And he's got to be aggressive. He's got to pin him onto the apex and try and get up to third. And he is. He's going to follow his teammate through here of Lerner. And well, we've got Yoyovsky. He's got an absolute one Wonderful start, but it's the two title protagonists from the esports season who are second and third. Yeah, but it was an absolutely disastrous start there for Josh Rogers. Goes from second on the starting grid down to fifth, and that's the inexperience here coming into these DTM cars in race room. Is perhaps the first ever uh, start he's had to do with a DTM car in this sort of high pressure situation, so you can understand the mistake. This is why I was so cautious about. Uh, uh, calling him for the race win due to that inexperience. We'll get to see it on the replay. Sluggish start from the Australian, and it allows him to get swarmed around the outside in towards turn one. Yeah, it wasn't officially the best start for uh, Jack Keefley, to be honest with you, but his aggression through the S's, again, calculated aggression, nothing too much on it, uh, was able to keep him up into that top three. Uh, as Rumble with Nils, then Nils is going to potentially make it three wide up towards Spoon, and he just gets closed off there by Naji and Romanidis. So Romanidis just ahead of Naji, and Romanidis just cuts him up off there so indeed Naji's not going to be able to make the move then and then we go to the back here then Joe who's a wild card down at P26 and he is uh, just in behind Tim Heineman Tim Heineman who's actually one of the most well-known race room drivers uh, ever and he's actually just won the DTM trophy championship in real life as well he will be getting a test in the DTM 2020 or 2021 cars I guess next year as well so maybe we'll see him in the DTM uh, for real, which would be an awesome, awesome story. But here's Kevin Siggy then. Siggy, who, if there's an opportunity to make an overtake, Connery, he will definitely take it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've gotten, the, I've had the pleasure of commentating on him during the ADAC GT Masters Esports Championship that we also have here on Race Room. He's always a driver that goes with these sorts of moves around the outside at turn one. Doesn't quite have the space to continue along the uh, the outside there of Jacob Brzezinski, but you can see he's just applying the pressure all over the rear of that number 28 car and he'll continue to try and press the nose into the re into the rear coming up towards these uh, fantastic S's section this you know very downforce very uh, you're on the edge of adhesion uh, coming through here on uh, in these cars and it's absolutely brilliant that uh, to drive as a driver and these drivers uh, you know trying to fight it out with others side by side coming through there which is not the easiest of things uh, to have to uh, try and negotiate Absolutely. We saw Nestor Garcia make a move on Gergo Boldy into turn number one. So now he's up to P8. Uh, Roman is still ahead of Naji then. Now up then. Currently in P12. Benz Banky 13th. Wisniewski is in 14th. Sanchez, Muller, Payev, uh, Betka, Ostgard then. And then Mitchell de Jong is your top 20. But at the top end then, it is Yoyovsky. He's already got that half a second advantage. But we know that Lerner and Keefley, those two drivers, have got all of that experience of leading races or being there or thereabouts. They will be saving DRS. They'll be saving the push to passes until when they very much need to use them. So, yeah, make sure that you keep an eye on them coming up towards the end of this race. Yashul, then, is just in behind then in fourth position. Not far behind, though, is Rogers. And like you said, lack of experience in getting the power down off the start line. That is the most important thing, to be honest, with these cars. It's so hard to get the power down. But now, since he's got his uh, race in check, he's coming up towards the end of lap number two. Joshua Rogers looking to be a bit of a danger here as well. Yeah, always a danger. You can't count him out. Very aggressive driver in his usual iRacing events as well. Uh, but... Like I said at the very start, the inexperience uh, coming off the start line, uh, off his uh, grid spot, excuse me, has really put a damper on his race so far. But if he can sell into his rhythm over the next couple of minutes, couple of laps, then maybe he'll be able to do something about those cars ahead of him. He is still the highest placed non-race route regular, uh, shall I say. So at least he's got that going for him. Um, but uh, further back in the pack, it's just all still very close together. Nose to tail, and Men's Monkey is right in the middle of it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I would like to apologize to anyone watching right now who's hearing fireworks in the background, but it would appear my neighbors are just as excited about the DTM Esports Super Finale as we are. There's fireworks going off all over the place. Crazy stuff. But yes, it is still you, Yoski, that leads. We're on board, though, with Ben Spanky. And at number 53, uh, he is just in uh, behind. He's actually up into P12 momentarily there. That's uh, not right. Uh, but he's just in behind Nils Nawox, who's in the black car just in front of him there. And uh, there's, yeah, it's just sort of gone into a bit of a procession here. Uh, we saw this during the Esports Championship, Connery, where it sort of was alive for the first couple of laps and then it went into a bit of a false sense of security in the mid part and then the last five minutes is just absolutely nuts yeah it's just everyone trying to find their own bit of track to work with at the moment and you see mitchell de young heading his way down the inside for p18 that's uh pierre ahead of him uh so that could have been a potentially sketchy moment there coming through spoon curve the car unsettled on the exit of the corner for the american i gotta say mitchell de young He'll be wanting a little bit more than P19 for the moment. Such a talented driver in so many uh, different disciplines. He decides to get himself involved in the road racing like this, oval racing, rally cross. He wants to stick his fingers in every single pie, but I don't think he's doing good enough for his own, uh, for, well, to his own liking in this race, but hopefully he can go forward. Well, yeah, there we go. We're on board of him right now in the camera there. And uh, again, doing very, very well. Bit of a, a bit of an all-rounder. And there was a bit of a rally cross attempt in towards Spoon there uh, on the initial lap, but it didn't get stuck. He's uh, managed to hold on to P19, didn't lose any positions, and Payev didn't lose a spot either. Payev, of course, uh, this year was involved in the Formula E Race From Home Challenge as well as Kevin Siggy. Payev right at the front end of that grid as well. Uh, but I tell you what, the big story here, as we come through the S's here, as it is very, very close between these drivers, is that Yoyoski is actually extending his lead here. It's that 1.1 second, now down to 9 tenths, but it's around that one second mark here. Oh, big moment there for Mitchell de Jong, and he just about holds on to it, and I tell you what, he has just lent on all of that rally cross experience there for that one. <laughs> yeah, the uh, car control is definitely one of Mitchell's big advantages when it comes to this sort of racing. Very good save there uh, from Mitchell to keep that car on the grey stuff and continue on racing here today. But looking back at your race leader, Erhan Yajowski, over a second is the gap back to the DTM Esports 2020 champion of Moritz Lohner. Lohner tries to close the gap coming through Spoon Curve, has gained a couple of tenths of a second as a result. But um, for Erhan Yajowski, you know, what's the situation with the push to passes? What's the situation with the DRS? Has he deployed those early to try and get away? And he'll have a distinct lack of them uh, coming into the latter portions of this race that's the question yeah for sure uh but you know sometimes you just have a track that you're really good at maybe it's that you know we saw quite the opposite for keith lee at the red bull ring you know of course he'd been dominating proceedings for uh all of the first two races and then he got to the red bull ring in round four or race four and it completely capitulated for him so yeah it's just maybe one of those things looks like uh, we've got an incident involving naji under investigation uh, again we have a live stewarding here uh, as we have potentially, well, Naji, yeah, we're on board of him right now. There's a move just happening in front there, and that's Wisniewski going ahead of Ben Spanky. Very good move there. But I think Ben Spanky is about to retake it. He has. So Ben Spanky has retaken that position. The Slovakian uh, making easy work there uh, of the return pass. Great stuff from both of them there. And uh, there was no contact either. Yeah, absolutely fair racing uh, between these drivers so far in this one. And Dwanki being part of the uh, Red Bull Racing eSports team, of course. You know, one of the uh, sort of wealth of real life uh, brands and uh, racing teams getting themselves involved in sim racing. That's kind of been the theme throughout 2020 due to the current world situation. We had a period of the year where not a lot of uh, real world racing was going on. And the next best thing is uh, you know, having events here in sim racing and Rebel Racing Esports, they kind of got in early. They've been in this uh, in this game for a few years now, and uh, uh, they continue to go from strength to strength in whatever they do. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's uh, great to have organizations such as Rebel here, Coanda, uh, Williams Esports, to so just mention a few uh, within this today. As we're aboard then with Tim Yashu, Yashu, a winner from the DTM Esports as well, remember? So, yeah, he's not too shy here. And as you can see, the gap is now only half a second between our champion from the DTM Esports Championship, Lerner in second to Yajowski, who first spot. But I tell you what, Yashu, Yashu's looking pretty dangerous. When he's dangerous around the 11 minute mark or 10 minutes to go, he invariably normally ends up with a podium. Yeah, that could possibly on the cards for, be on the cards for Tim Yashu, sitting inside the slipstream of Jack Keithley. 
in that Audi in and amongst all of those BMWs at the very front of the field. It's basically a top five train at the moment. There's some decent separation between Rogers and Siggy for P5. Uh, and Rogers just kind of sitting at the very back of his train in that uh, white and green BMW, uh, looking to try and make some moves perhaps at the end of this race. But he's sitting there patiently for the moment, looking for any opportunities, any mistakes that the likes of Tim Yarshall might make. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I don't know if you say patient. I just don't think Josh Rogers is one of those drivers that's that patient, to be honest. <laughs> if he, if the opportunity arises, he's going to be taking it on. Uh, we're on board then with Jano Otmer, who, who would not have been putting overly too much practice for this. Of course, he is currently leading the F1 Esports Championship. $750,000 on the line in that championship. So it just goes to show the pedigree of that driver to be leading the championship. Uh, Again, he's only a hot lapper though, so yeah, don't expect him to do very well in races, they said. <laughs> that didn't work out, did it? His, uh, yeah, he is a very special talent, of course. 26th on the grid, already up to P20. Uh, so if he can manage to get a decent qualifying in, uh, he will be a genuine, genuine threat. And also, he loves high downforce cars, so this is absolutely perfect for him. Yeah, he, like I said, he loves high downforce cars, but the, these are the open wheelers, which is perhaps what he is used to uh, from the F1 esports side of things. So there's still a little bit of a change that you have to make in your driving style with these cars compared to those uh, uh, compared to those F1 machines. But back towards the front of the field then, and Boris Lohner is continuing to try and eat away at this gap, and he's got it down now to about half a second between himself and Johan Jajowski. So Jajowski, for all intents and purposes, has been caught, and now it's up to Moritz Lona uh, with the execution of the pass. Yeah, Lerna there is right up in behind Jajowski now. So Jajowski is just uh, been kind of left alone here for the first 10 minutes, which is kind of the nature of the racing we've had over the last sort of couple of months with the DTM Esports Championship. And now it gets frantic here. Six seconds slowdown penalty for Nayox for hitting Naji in the hairpin on lap number four. Well, that is going to cost him more than six seconds, as we know. Of course, they get slowed down, but ultimately, uh, you know, you've got to then get back up to speed. So it normally ends up to be around about eight to ten seconds. And uh, yeah, very, very unfortunate here. And actually, he's dropped down from 11th to 18th position then, has Nils, as we then go on board with Tim Yasha. And Yasha's made a nice little gap for himself here of Rogers. And he won't have to be too worried about Rogers making a dive up the inside, although he just makes a mistake there uh, through the Degners. They come up then towards Kobayashi for what would be lap of seventh time here. There we go, through they come. And it is really between the front two, Yoyoski and Lerner here. Keith Lee, who I was just about to say is a bit far behind the front two to really hard the pressure on, has actually started to go forward here as well. So Lerner and Keith Lee are on the charge. They are, and this could potentially be the makings of a particularly spicy final couple of minutes. If all of these guys close up on each other, we can have an absolutely titanic battle maybe even involving three, maybe four, maybe even all five cars for the race uh, win and those podium positions at the very end of this event. So this is shaping up to be a pretty exciting finish, uh, but uh, I won't speak too much on that considering how we've had fantastic finishes ruined before. Yeah, that is true. Um, ultimately, yeah, we don't want that to be the case, but you never know. This is, uh, you know, there's money on the line. As soon as money's on the line, Connery, as we know, things tend to change. Uh, it doesn't become such friendly natured as it once was. Yajowski there trying to break the toe then, uh, which I don't think is going to make too much difference here. Josh Rogers then trying to go around the outside in towards turn number one for fourth position. Is he going to get that stuck? Can't quite see due to the camera angles here. He's still trying to go around the outside. And no, just gets closed off there. Yashul and indeed Rogers now losing time to the front three. So very, very quickly, if these two, you know, continue to go side by side, it will become a free horse race for the victory. It would be. So Josh Rogers needs to get this pass done quickly if he's going to have any sort of chance at a podium position. Yashel continuing to hold on to this. You can see Rogers' car is oh so twitchy, right on the very edge of grip. Uh, but Rogers able to keep that BMW in check and continue to try, try to chase for this P4. Better line coming through the second deck than there, but I don't think it's going to result in an opportunity coming up and towards the hairpin this time around as we get a great view of the Australian. A little bit of a deviated line coming through the apex of the hairpin. i got to say, though, uh, you might not be aware of this, uh, Luke, but all, all the Quanda teammates all live in the same house, or the vast majority of them live in the same house. So you can see that uh, Joshua Rod is there with the purple carpet inside the main gaming room of Quanda Simsport, and he'll be joined in there by uh, uh, by a couple of his teammates as well. Quanda Clout House. That's uh, it's got a ring to it. <laughs> uh, Yoyovsky still leading the race then, uh, as we're on board then with Alejandro Sanchez. 
So he's a bit of a meat in the sandwich right now as well. He's in between Naji in P14 and then Wisniewski, who is in P12. But here we go then. I think we're about to start to see some moves and shakes appear. And you can see that Keefley is hoping that there's some action in front of him so he can then take full advantage. So Yovsky's led from lights to five minutes to go here. Not to flag yet. And can learn it, close the gap. DRS then not as strong as it was with the 2016 car. So Yovsky is a lot more about the driver uh, with this class of car now, which is fantastic to see. And Yovsky again, with that long start finish straight, still holding on up towards the S's here. And actually, if anything, there was a mistake there by Lerner. So Yovsky is extended now to six tenths. And that may not seem like a lot, Connery, but in these cars with these drivers, that is an absolute mile. Yeah, you, you got to be careful here if, lo if you're a loner as well, because Keithley is there ready and waiting to capitalize on any sort of mistake uh, that Martin Slona makes. So he's got to be not only be looking ahead of him and trying to chase for that race win, but also looking behind him and be aware of the threats that Keithley poses that he's had to de deal with throughout the entirety of the, uh, the main 2020 DTM Esports Championship season. As we look back to Alejandro Sanchez, one of the other uh, iRacing, uh, pri primarily iRacing drivers here in this one, having a good finish in the in the Super Cup and in P13 at the moment. As uh, he was a bit of a surprise, he's had a bit of a breakout he year here in 2020. Luke uh, that has Alejandro Sanchez. We didn't expect him to do so well in that championship uh, coming into this year, but he really did surprise us with a couple of top finishes. Yeah, and that's what sim racing is all about these days. You know, back in the day, uh, five to ten years ago, it was the same drivers for an extended period of time that were the top end of sim racing. But now it's very much similar to any sport you'd see, the NFL, you know, NBA, football. Um, it's just the youngsters come from each year. And there's yep. new drivers that added to the already, in, you know, big list. And there's also top drivers that drop off. It's just the nature of the beast. Uh, Josh Rogers there making a potential move as Siggy is now primed position. And I think if he could get a top five here, he might be very dangerous at Daytona. Again, a lot of these drivers will be getting experience as they go with the car. Uh, not so much for the front three. The front three, of course, were in our major esports competition or the main show over the last few weeks. And again, Erhan Yoyoski just about hanging on. The Macedonian here could potentially take a commanding lead going into the Daytona finale. Yeah, he wants the lead from green flag to checkered flag, but the only man standing in his way at the moment is Moritz Lona in that BMW. Big in the wing mirrors, the rear view mirror of that uh, car of Yayovsky, but lost a little bit of time there coming through the first sector. Gap is back up to about seven tenths of a second between the two of them. So Yayovsky may be having a, a little bit of a, a bit of flourish, a bit of a flourish here towards the end might be able to be enough to get him to the checkered flag in first place. Looking back though, Robin Becker, of course, uh, an absolute star when it comes to racing on Forza. Uh, representative of Red Bull Racing Esports. It's P16 at the moment, right behind Mitch and Leon. Yeah, P16, as you just said there. Uh, again, from Forza, a multiple world champion. Uh, he is just, again, one of the... This, I can say this about everybody. They're all, like, one of the very best <laughs> in the world. That's why they're here. I'm just talking rubbish at this point. Um, and Yoski's doing the right job here. Again, it's all about making sure that when you get into turn number one, you're not being overtaken. And also this is uh, another part, down into 130R, in towards that final chicane. If you can stay ahead, going into that final chicane and into turn number one, you've got a fair chance of being able to defend the lead. But again, with these long straights, it kind of takes it out of your hands with DRS as well. But right now, Yoyovsky's doing perfectly well right now, although he makes a little bit of a mistake on entry towards the final chicane. On the power early enough though, but is this the opportunity? And actually you can see that Keith Lee is as close to Lerner as Lerner is to Yuyovsky. So they come down across the start-finish line then, and it's 1 DRS. minute 50 seconds to go. DRS wide open then for Yuyovsky. Uh, sorry, not for Yuyovsky, for Lerner. And Lerner not able to make the move. So by my calculations, this is the penultimate lap right now. Racing incident led to the retirement of van der Linde. Ah, oh, Sheldon van der Linde. Oh. Again, you know, it is what it is. You can't can't win races and be that good looking although he's proved that to be the fact this year in dtm um he's won two races this season it's been a, a we're talking about breakout yes it's been a real breakout year for sheldon mandelinder actually and again just great for him to give up his time it is a race weekend for him at hockenheim this weekend and he's still giving up his time to get involved in something such as this so uh, yeah awesome stuff to see him around and also rudolf rin rudolf rin who's currently uh, in 24th i think he might be out of the race as well actually two laps down uh, he drives in a porsche in the DTM Trophy, and Tim Heinemann. Tim Heinemann is the DTM Trophy champion. So yeah, yeah, thank you for giving up your time 
uh, for today. And, you know, Tim Heineman, who has come from a race room background, but now, of course, he's got his full focus on the real world of motorsport. But anyway, back up to the front here, and there's 40 seconds to go as they come up then towards Spoon Curve for the second from last time. And if anything, the danger man looks like it might be Jack Keithley. It could be, but something I noticed on that previous lap, on both the back straight here and on the pit straight, Luna was the only one out of the top two to activate DRS. And has Yayovsky run out of them? He's not using DRS on the way down in towards 130R, so Yayovsky potentially has run out of those uh, activations to use. And now, Barrett's Luna potentially could make the pass happen down in towards turn number one. 15 seconds remaining as they head their way through the final chicane, so they'll get the one lap to go signal coming across the line this time. Ihan Yoski would have hoped that this race ended one lap early, but it hasn't. He defends all the way to the pit wall. Here comes Moritz Lohner then, attempting around the outside to try and gain the race win away. He carries so much momentum, and Yoski's lost the position. Moritz Lohner's got him. What a move that was there by Moritz Lerner. He was so committed. He didn't even run wide out on the exit of turn one into turn two, and he got straight across Yoski there, and that is almost job done. You know, the only real person that can can make the charge now i think would be keithley and yovsky i think he might be done for here the tires look like they're not in the best performance and well morris lerner who indeed is our esports champion as we look at the overtake once again he pins he pins yovsky onto the apex forces him to get on the brakes earlier but it's just the nonchalantness of him able to go around the outside and just it would just look so easy but he's racing against erhan yovsky that was not an easy overtake to make it wasn't, and uh, great presence of mind to go right up against the curb on the inside after uh, after getting the pass done to really try and stunt the momentum of Yayovsky because he could so easily come back at him coming up towards the inside of turn two there. But Morris Lerner was able to cover off the move, and now he's got a half a second advantage already, and Keithley's now rubbing his hands because if he gets a good run out of the spoon here, he can make it happen into the chicane. He can indeed. Again, these three have been the stars of the show here today. This is going to be uh, a fantastic battle if it does indeed go into race number two at Daytona. But as they come down in towards 130R for the very final time, it's Keithley that's looking for a move on Yuyovsky. Neither of them are close enough here to Moritz Lerner. They've got to be hoping for a mistake here. And wow, there's a huge error there from Yuyovsky. He's just about held on to the curb there. And look at Lerner. Always looks cool, calm and composed. He waited for his moment. The moment was the last lap, and there it goes. It's Moritz Lerner once again, a little fist pump there. He's happy. He will take the checkered flag and the win in the DTM Esports Super Finale race number one. In second spot will be Erhan Yuyovsky from pole, and then Jack Keefley is in third position. Connery, he waited, he took his chance, and he finally got up into the lead of the race, and well, just showed why he is our D DTM Esports champion. Yeah, that was an incredible move there from Moritz Lohner. And it was very similar, well, perhaps a little bit shorter and more conclusive than the move he pulled off uh, on Yarshel, I believe it was, uh, coming towards the second last race of the season in, in the regular season with that amazing side-by-side -side battle through the middle sector at the Red Bull Ring. But this time for Moritz Lohner, he left no doubts about how, which way that battle was going to go. It was him all the way with the commitment around the outside. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't have that five-way battle we might have thought was going to happen, but Yasha and Rogers just got involved with each other a little bit too much and ultimately mm. cost each other the chance of running on the podium. But yeah, a worthy winner uh, there. You've got to feel sorry for Yeovsky. Yeovsky did such a great job. He, you know, what, 19 minutes, no mistakes, and then all of a sudden gets pinned onto the apex with the use of DRS, and, and it's all she wrote. But Jack Keefley in third spot, getting that podium for all three of those is a really strong position for them moving into race number two. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's some of the stronger drivers definitely in these in these DTM machines on race room. They had, you know, the entire experience of running through that uh, regular season as well. So that they, you know, it's it's so easy for them to get to grips with the car. But, you know, that, that, that's well, I just kind of want to say a lot of those other sim drivers have done also done really, really well, uh, especially Joshua Rogers mixing it, trying to mix it in with the top five. He didn't come away with a top five finish, I don't think, at the end of that one. Dropped to P6 after Kevin Siggy managed the overtake, but there's the confirmation of the top three. So Moritz Lerner does indeed win out there. He gets the win. The most photoshopped picture I've ever seen in my life, Erhan Yajowski in P2 and Jack Keithley in P3. And, you know, you're going to be thinking for Keithley... P3 may be not enough with Lerner on the form he's been on, but here's the full standings then. Lerner, Yayovsky, Keithley, P1, P2, P3. Yarshal, Siggy, Rogers. Uh, so Siggy and Rogers are the first two that weren't in 
the esports championship that we have. Brzezinski as well, Nestor Garcia, Gergo Boldy, and then Michael Romanidis will round out your top 10. And yeah, just talking a little bit there, you know, Keith Lee, of course, knows the danger that Lerner holds. And P3 may not be enough here, you know, because Lerner, if he doesn't win the next race and Keith Lee wins, more than likely Lerner's going to get second. That's just kind of how things have been going. Yeah, I'm seeing Moritz Lerner on 26 points at the moment as the top of the points order. Uh, Jajowski, second place on 21 points. Uh, so that's how things uh, add up at the at the very end here. We'll get confirmation of that from the uh, race admi administrators in just a moment. Those are just my own calculations. But, you know, what, what an event, uh, what a race uh, there for Moritz Lerner from third place on the grid. And uh, he's always pulling off these sorts of signature moves now i guess we can say he's become known for these big committed moves that leave the other driver you know just kind of standing still it was how calmly he was just able to just pull over and cover off any advances from yoyoski mm -hmm. like it just looked so pedestrian but they are going absolutely flat out so yeah a fantastic move worthy of a race victory but that's azuka done and we're already moving into the next race so let's check out the next track, which is Daytona. Hey guys, it's me again. Now we go to Daytona, a very special track in the DTM cars. Um, enjoy the lap. Approaching turn one. Braking is uh, very important here because you can easily lock up and lose a lot of time. It's also a very good spot to, to overtake. Then approaching turn two, um, it's also a very good spot to overtake. Um, when you break a little bit later on the inside maybe, you can try to overtake the, the car ahead of you. The exit is very important here as well because um, you have to get early onto the, uh, onto the power and yeah, you can easily, uh, the, the rear can easily step, step out as well. Then braking for the next turn, you have to brake a little bit while steering, so this is um, important to, to hold the car uh, st um, stable as well. Then last turn before we go on to the banking, it's a third gear corner, a little bit faster than the others, and yeah, then we go on to the banking. This is probably where you want to use uh, push to pass, because it's out of a yeah, slower corner, and you can gain the most time um, there when you use it. Then we'll approach the fastest turn of the of the whole track, the bus stop. It will be in fourth gear. A very fast entry. Um, hug, hug the curbs on the inside and the fast exit. And yeah, now the the draft games will will start to play out because people will use DRS. People will maybe also use push to pass here. And with the draft as well, you will have a lot of action coming up. Maybe with three, four whites. And yeah, we're coming down to the, the start-finish straight again and finish the lap on the banking. And hopefully that, that's a good lap. As you saw, a very high-speed track with a lot of overtaking possibilities. Um, so the, the racing will be quite exciting, which you will hopefully see now. Enjoy it. It's a fact. There's no way in the world he's not got makeup on there. He's got such great skin otherwise. Sorry, I've <laughs> sidetracked again. Oh, God, I've got to compose myself. Daytona. It's, 20, it's the year of 2020. Anything could go down in 2020. DTMs around Daytona. Oh, oh this is going to be so good. This is going to be so much more different from any of the racing that we saw in the regular season. It's going to be so strategic when it comes to the draft. Maybe even those drivers that have teammates in the race, I'm, I'm looking at the Williams eSports guys in particular, might be even be able to work together a little bit when it comes to the race. Even in qualifying as well, the draft is going to be so, so important. So you, you see, uh, you know, if you're out there like this with the onboard right now, you're not getting any help. Uh, from the draft ahead of you, so you're going to really suffer in terms of those lap times. Well, no wonder Joe Huntonji struggled in race number one. He, he can't see anything. He's got a blindfold on. Like, <laughs> what's he expecting? Of course, he is using VR, ladies and gentlemen, uh, which, uh, yeah, we have full access to within race rooms. So make sure if you've got a VR headset, give it a go. It might be fun. I'm going to let you know it's a little secret. I don't get on with it. My stomach doesn't get on with it very well at all. Uh, but it is pretty awesome, not going to lie. Uh, but he is currently P21, but they're all embarking on, upon their first laps. And again, this track's well known for its endurance series, or indeed oval series. 
not for a sprint race with DRS activation, high downforce cars. Like, this is just so unique, and this is sim racing. We could do whatever we want, whenever we want. That is the beauty of sim racing. And I'm just, I'm just part of this life. It's great. Yeah, it's great. You, you can even, you know, with, uh, you know, under some circumstances, you can just take cars that are not suited to certain tracks and you just go and use them anyway, because like you said, this is sim racing and you can do whatever you want in terms of the car track combos and the Daytona road course with these DTM machines. That could, is a potentially pretty spicy combo as we see the first couple of lap times come in here in the second qualifying of the day. Kevin Siggy setting the early pace. You can see him up on screen for you now. That's the uh, Team Redline driver uh, setting a fantastic bank lap in his Audi. Yes, uh, and we saw that the first lap time that was posted last time out was the one that got pole position. Like, we've been seeing the times get progressively faster and faster and faster over the last few weeks, and it's just not worked out in Suzuka. So are we going to see something similar here um, indeed at Daytona, or is it going to go back to what we've been expecting? And as you can see here, first sector, Asigi and Rogers is faster. So I'm expecting the times to get quicker and quicker. And look at the management there of the left wheels, just hugging that yellow line, trying to go the shortest route possible around the oval section. And well, are we going to have any teammates potentially working together here to gain a bit of slipstream? That is uh, obviously going to be a huge factor. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I was pondering as well. Of course, Kevin Siggy at the moment, no drafting partner to work with, but still setting purple sector times here. Maybe even a purple lap time coming towards the end of this one as well. As you can see, he's hugging that double yellow line on the inside there. Two tires splitting uh, those two yellow lines, trying to take the shortest way around the oval as is possible. Uh, possible. Uh, now coming across what the Americans call the tri-oval and across the line to improve on his already sensational time. Yeah, 34.269. Uh, as you said, they just went through the tri-oval. Uh, tri that's how they say it. Yeah, there you go. That's like, like trifle, but with oval at the Spe end. Speaking uh, of Americans, Mitchell Dion. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to go into some sort of political speech. Let's not do that today. <laughs> sorry, I thought we were just going to go on about who's won the election and stuff. I'm just so used to that in the news right now. Uh, but it is Kevin Siggy that is on pole position. And Mitchell Dion up to top four then. It's a very good time from Mitchell Dion. 134.682. He's got a bit of a... Actually, I think he's got Moritz Lerner in front of him. So if there's anyone to learn from, it would be Moritz Lerner. Um, but yeah, as it stands, Gergo Boldy's up to third position. And this is interesting here because Lerner's only P6. Jack Keefley's only P10. And Yejovski, who's second in our championship today, is P2. So this is going to be very... And Lerner... Oh, he's coming out the pits now. Two minutes to... No, he won't get another lap time in. He's done. So he will not go any better than P6 here, Connery. So Yoski with a huge opportunity. Yeah, potentially, as Luna has to look. I'll go on the inside there through the international horseshoe and uh, continue on down through the left-hand kink before you get towards the end of the infield section. But yeah, absolutely. Maybe a little bit of a mistiming there from Moritz Luna. Jack Keithley, though, P10 here in the, in the first round of laps. Let's see if he's able to improve. It doesn't look like a great lap for him. He had a poor sector one, better sector two, but it might be all reliant on how this sector three goes for the British driver as it's just foot, uh, foot to the floor all the way through the trioval here, across the line he goes. It's not going to be good enough for P1, but it's good enough to launching up into P8, which for a driver of Jack Heathley's calibre, possibly not what he was looking for. No, and that's him done as well. He will not get another time in. And Sanchez just moves up into P8 himself. Uh, as well here. Boldy up to P3. And wow, this really is going to be an interesting finale here. Opmir then is currently P13. And he's just given us a little spin there for the cameras. Thank you, Yano. We much appreciate that. Uh, Keithley is giving it another go here. But again, uh, the time's going to run out. So I guess he's just getting track time here. What I'm really worried about today is that there's going to be no yellow paint left on the inside of the oval. Yeah, that's, uh, that potentially might be an issue. But uh, Mitchell D. Young up in towards P3. So second row of the grid. I'm, I'm reading on our little run of show here, uh, Luke, that we'll actually get a standing start. But we're, we're doing a standing start on the banking of the trial. So I, I'm not entirely sure how that one's going to turn out unless the race administrators have, called a, uh, administrators have called a rolling start here, which would probably be a little bit more appropriate. But there we go. Rudolf Rint heading his way across the line, improves on his previous lap time. But, uh, well, P26 is still going to be where he's going to start. Uh, well, you're wondering how they're going to do this? Uh, it's called magic, Connery, okay? You get, <laughs> get used to it. Magic. It's sim racing. We can do whatever we want, like I said. You know, they, we could start them flying in the air if we want to. We just decided against it. 
Jack Keefley then. Five seconds to go. His qualifying is indeed about to end here. And that will be it done and dusted. As you can see, there, had a little schnozzle of the nose of the car. And actually, he's practicing coming into the pits, which <laughs> is a, a strange one because you do not want to be coming into the pits in a 20-minute time race. But yes, qualifying is over. And the big surprise is, is that apart from uh, uh, Erhan Yajowski, our two big dogs, as I like to call them, Lerner and Keefley, they're nowhere to be found. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this has really thrown a little bit of a spanner into the works. But, you know, coming into this, it was the more likely uh, round of this that we'll actually get to see this sort of thing happen. Because, you know, Daytona as a road course, it, it doesn't uh, really separate the drivers out in terms of skill. Even in qualifying, it's a pretty simple track to get uh, to, you know, go, to go around. Apart from maybe turn one can be very sketchy at full speed with the turning and the elevator and the banking change and the bumps on the inside that can cause a problem but apart from that there are no massive trouble spots or tricky spots on this racetrack so uh yeah this race is just shaping up to be even more interesting now and I, and I can't wait to get it started yeah absolutely i just yeah it just again goes to show the strength and depth within the field we've got here regardless of what games they're they're strong on they're all exceptionally talented sim races so expect the unexpected expect anybody to indeed win here but here is the official qualifying positions then so it's kevin siggy who gets three points and don't rule him out he is a serial winner erhan yoyovsky then is in second mitchell de jong in third spot then didn't have a great first race but wow he is right up in amongst it in p3 we've got gogo boldy in fourth nikodem Wisniewski in fifth position moritz learner then winner from race one only oh. six spot joshua rogers in seventh alejandro sanchez is in eighth jack keithley only in ninth position it's very reminiscent of how it went for him at the Red Bull Ring only a couple of weeks ago. Tim Yarshall then rounds out your top 10. We then got Jacob Brzezinski, Michael Romanidis, Nestor Garcia, Robin Betka, Tommy Ustgard. We then got Jano Opmir, Lucas Muller, Fence Banky, David Nagy, Niels Nawiox. We then got Aurelian Malle, Sheldon van der Linde. And well, they're sick of me talking, so they decided to get rid of the <laughs> names off of the screen. But yeah, the grid has just been completely churned up. Yeah, it absolutely has. And if, if it finishes in that order, which I'm going to say right now is not going to finish in that order, <laughs> order because everything will be shuffled uh, when it comes to the racing here. That's just how Daytona races with the draft and the amount of passing opportunities that you have. And remember, DRS activation is going to be so important in this race as well. You want to leave at least one for that final run to the line. Otherwise, you're going to be a sitting duck. Absolutely. Well, time for us to stop talking. Will we see the Macedonian flag flying high in the D uh, DTM Esports finale. We'll find out after these messages from our partners. In der Boxengasse werden die letzten Vorkehrungen getroffen. Volle Konzentration bei den Piloten. Die Spannung steigt ins Unermessliche. Ein fulminanter Start. Zwei Piloten liefern sich ein knallhartes kopf an kopf -Rennen. Ich glaube, mein Schwein pfeift. Sie schmeißt den Turbo an, hebt ab und fliegt als Erste ins Ziel. Auf die Pol Position. Freut euch auf unglaubliche Fotos und Videos mit dem Xiaomi Mi10T Pro 5G Smartphone. Jetzt online auf mediamarkt.de slash dtm. Also gib Gummi, Mediamarkt. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost time to find out who is going to be our super finale extravaganza, super califragilistic, espialidocious winner of <laughs> this championship today and take home the money as well as a lot of pride. I'm going to ask you once again, then, Connery, who is your pick for this? And you can't pick my man, Erhan Yajowski. Yeah, a little bit of a disappointment in that first round for my pick. Here's the uh, points order as they stand, though. Moritz Sloan at top of the pile with uh, Yajowski in second place, but... I gotta say, I can't count my man out now. I can't count out Yayovsky. It was, uh, you know, he, even though he did lose out that position at the very start of the, uh, uh, well, at the very end, excuse me, of the previous race, uh, I think he's got the track position to be able to work wonders here. It, it's all on Moritz Lona now to, and Jack Keithley, of course, to work their way through the field. You even count, count Kevin Siggy in there with an outside chance as well. 
Uh, but I got to say, Yajowski's put himself in one of the best spots here today. So I, I think he'll be able to take it. But it's a prediction that's uh, got a lot of asterisks on it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you've stolen mine. That's what's that's happened here. You've got 26 <laughs> drivers to choose from, and you choose the same one as me. Absolutely ridiculous. But no, uh, Han Yajowski showed flashes of absolute brilliance during our DTM Esports Championship. And well, is it going to be the case here today where he actually takes the crown he was making silly mistakes the consistency was what let him down over the dtm esports championship but today he's got an opportunity he is in a huge huge uh you know right at the front end of the grid a huge chance to potentially pick up a load of money there's nils uh now yox then as well again look how dark his hair is he's like 49 years old there's no way he's got no gray hairs and just not good um we've got a little bit of argy bargy here then um between <laughs> brzezinski and I'm not too sure who's just gone ahead of him there. But, um, yeah, no love lost there. This is a warm-up, guys. Just keep it to the warm-up, I guess. Um, and, well, I'm sure... That isn't Mitchell de Jong, but the way he took the line onto the grass straight away, it seems like it might be Mitchell de Jong. Of course, Daytona does have a rally cross circuit as well here. Uh, Jack Keefley, lots of work to do for him if he wants to go and take the championship home today. He wants to indeed put the uh, uh, disappointment of what happened last time out in the, uh, the official championship behind him. But he's got that chance to indeed overturn that. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to have a proper look at our grid or not, but as it stands, we've got 50 seconds for them warming up. They come back onto the oval section here as Jack Keefley comes back onto the oval section. Well, here we go. Here's the magical grid. It's Kevin Siggy on pole with Erhan Yajowski in second. Most photoshopped picture in the world. Mitchell de Jong and Gergo Baldi in third and fourth. Nikodem Wisniewski and Moritz Lerner in fifth and sixth position. Joshua Rogers and Alejandro Sanchez in seventh and eighth spot. But they got Jack Keefley and Tim Yasha. Those two can't be separated by the looks of things. But they got Jacob Brzezinski and Michael Romanidis. Nestor Garcia and Robin Betka there. 15th and 16th is Tommy Ustgard and Jano Okmir. Lucas Muller and Ben Spanky are in 17th and 18th position. And on the 10th row of the grid, David Nagy and Nils Naujox. Aurelian Malay and Sheldon van der Linde are 21st and 22nd. Then we've got Tim Heinemann and Peo Pev. There's the dramatic music. It sends chills down my spine. Connery's still trying to figure out as to how we're going to get this race started on an oval banking section with a standing start. Well, you're about to find out and you're about to see this magic take place. Yeah, I did get some reports that some drivers were attempting it in the little warm-up session that we had. And it's, well, shall we say it's going to get interesting uh, on the start here. If, of course, it is indeed a, a standing start like we think it's going to be. It just adds a little bit of extra challenge on the start of the race here. You'll, you'll expect to see those, if we do have a standing start, those cars slip down the banking, at least initially, in the first start phase. And we, there we go. We I'll tell you what. The best thing about this situation is we don't have to do the start. <laughs> we just get to watch it happen. <laughs> anyway, Siggy on pole in Erhan Yajowski in second. And we are green light racing and they are snaking around like a happy dog's tail right now as they go up towards turn number one. And uh, well, the front three at least have got away very nicely. Indeed, Yajowski just sitting in behind Siggy. It goes three wide then just in behind then between Wisniewski, Boldy and Lerner. Uh, and Lerner does not need to be getting involved in any shenanigans on lap number one, and he has done. He's already down to P7 here, so Joshua Rogers showing his aggression here early, makes up a position. Boldy just ahead of Josh Rogers now as well, and there's all sorts of stuff, action going down the pack here. But it is Siggy that's taken the lead of this race. He's taking the ball by the horns, and Yoyovsky, who, as it stands, I feel like would win this championship if he stays like this. And, oh, there's a big Whoa. mistake there by Niels, and that is not going to end well there. Looks like they may be in contact. They aided that. Uh, unfortunate there for Niels. Uh, again, having an unbelievable year, uh, considering he has taken like a lead role in the sim racing at uh, G2 and uh, Red Bull Racing. And to now be right at the top of his game once again, he's had a fantastic year. Not quite worked out for him today, but again, we're going to see a lot more of that man. Uh, but as it stands then, we've got Siggy in first position, Yuyovsky second, and De Jong is in third spot. And this is now where it starts to get very, very interesting. Yeah, but it is. You can just see... The, well, drivers inside the top 10 all absolutely knows the tail coming up towards the bus stop for the first time. Looks like everyone has gotten themselves through unscathed. 
in that instance as you look to see uh, Jojo Baldi look to try and sit inside the slipstream of Josh Rogers here. Josh Rogers also closing up on Viznewski. We might even get to see three wide coming up towards the start finish line. That was a forceful move there from Rogers to try and block off the lane. As Rogers get fast done on Viznewski, so will Baldi. So that's just how potent the uh, the draft, draft and the DRS activations uh, here are. You can lose two positions with uh, just out of nowhere. Yeah, and as you see, the big fact here is that the front three have already got away. This is not good news for Lerner. This is not good news for Keithley. Keithley's dropped two positions, though. He's around a P11 as it stands. But yeah, Lerner needs to make sure that he sticks with the front three. So again, you're going to see a lot of these drivers kind of work together. Lerner's in a position where he just has to make overtake after overtake and get as close to Yuyoski as possible. Here's the start then. Again, you can see straight away, they all filter in to try and gain as much slipstream down as towards turn number one. Turn number one, I think, is the hardest turn one in not only sim racing, but motorsport in general. You lose complete sense of downforce under braking. It is just the most awkward corner to get the car settled and get turned in ever. So, uh, yeah, kudos to all of them right now. And as you can see here, to be fair, Siggy has had a very, very good sector number two because he's managed to get a little bit of a gap here, although that will come down very, very quickly indeed as Brzezinski is about to potentially lose a position here from Yashul. Uh, and look at Keefley. Keefley, well, he decides against it as they come towards the bus stop chicane here and... You know, judging from Ethley's perspective, that is a uh, very, very tame considering he needs to get near the front. Yeah, he's, he's he can't afford to hang around. Can the British driver from Williams Esports uh, needs to go forward, needs to get deep inside that top ten, but ideally needing to win this race as far as his uh, uh, event win is concerned. And uh, being stuck down in P11, not exactly ideal. Is a bit of changing for position further up though. The two Quanda Simsport teammates of Rogers and De Jong. Uh, deciding to swap positions there for that final podium spot. So the two Coanda teammates uh, possibly working together. Yeah, we've got uh, Lerner, who's dropped down to eighth position here as well. So again, this is great news for Yuyovsky. Uh, but as you can see, the, the front 11, 12, they're all so, so close right now. Again, anything can happen. And, you know, we know that drivers are going to be saving things like DRS and stuff till the end of the race. And it's going to be a, even a bigger factor around a circuit such as this with, you know, being able to make the overtake with just a slipstream anyway. It's, uh, it's going to be massive later on in this race. Siggy nearly lost the lead to Yeoski. It looks like Yeoski's pulled out and tried to make the overtake without using DRS. And uh, as soon as he's hit that wall of air, uh, indeed the resistance against his car just slowed him right down. Uh, we're on board with Lerner then, and Lerner is going backwards rather than forwards. Siggy, by the way, is just... Just seems to have some unreal pace around here, Connery. Like, again, to not really be under that much pressure coming around the final horseshoe uh, onto the oval section... Like, he is getting that middle sector absolutely nailed. Yeah, he really, really is. And uh, it's a fantastic performance so far in this event for Kevin Siggy. The, the main issue for him is that it, can he conserve these DRS activations until later on in the race so that he has at least has something to try and defend the inevitable charge uh, that Yorovsky that Yorovsky will put on him, especially in the final lap situation, coming towards the start finish line. It's a big, big drafting zone all the way out of the belt, bus stop through NASCAR, what they call turn three and four. But of course, we all know it's one single turn uh, towards the uh, start finish line. That that's going to be the main opportunity that Yorovsky has at the end of this race if he doesn't get this pass done. Yorovsky is playing an absolute blinder here. I don't know if you noticed that there, Connery, but he is bump drafting Siggy forward. So he's not even trying to attempt to make an overtake. He is trying to force the issue where them three are battling it out for the lead at the end of this race. He doesn't want to be losing any time by trying to make an overtake. And I'm wondering whether Joshua Rogers will be giving the same sort of favor here. I'm going to say no. Uh, but already they are, again, let's take the front three out of the equation. They're about 1.2 seconds ahead of the next group of cars. So Yuyovsky doing the bump draft into Siggy on the back straight. That is huge for his championship credentials. It is, and uh, I, I'm seeing at least in my points calculation, so that this is very much provisional at the moment. Yayovsky 41 points, Siggy 38 points. Uh, so even if they finish as they are with Siggy and Yayovsky in that order, it will still be Yayovsky uh, taking the DTM Esports Super Final. But if Rogers gets involved in any way, if Baldi and De Jong are able to you know, surmount the gap and cause Yayovsky a bit of a problem, then, then maybe, just maybe, there's a universe where Siggy wins this. Well, it, all it's going to take is Rogers getting up ahead, surely. So if Rogers gets ahead here, it will take it out of Yuyovsky's hands. So Yuyovsky, in trying to help Siggy being pushed along, I think Rogers is actually doing the same. So he has 
decided to join the party. And now look at him close look up here. That. And we're going to get some double bump drafting made famous by Kelvin van der Linde uh, in the eSports Championship. Didn't go as well as it is going right now um, for them earlier on this season. But uh, ultimately, uh, it's working well for the front three. And again, they are making it very, very clear that they want to get to the final couple of laps here. And then it is winner takes all from the front three. So very clever from these in sim, these sim races right now. And it can't be said that this is the way sim races normally think. They're normally thinking just about themselves. This is very rare to see this, especially when money's on the line. Especially when they're from completely separate teams as well. As uh, Rogers, he did have Mitchell De Young up there, you know, helping him out in the early portion of the race. But I, I think De Young has just kind of fallen off the back of things a little bit. Definitely not in and amongst this leading trio right now. <laughs> Look at the big correction there for Josh Rogers in the corner just before they exit out on towards the NASCAR banking once again. Uh, so, you know, Josh Rodders, he's, he's in a bit of a spoiler position here uh, at the moment. In terms of his championship, he's, he's got a very outside shot, but he, he could potentially uh, be Siggy's best friend at this point. Yeah, he could be. Um, but yeah, we have got uh, three of the, the biggest names in sim racing currently. All very young men as well, all at the top of their game. And uh, I feel like this is going to be an absolute classic coming down towards the end of this. And Yossi's going to make a decision here. Does he just go out for the lead at this point? Or is he happy to be in second? I guess, you know, being in second, you've got that opportunity on the final lap to potentially then go out ahead. But ultimately, that's leaving it up to chance a little bit as well. It's a, it's a tough situation to be in. And this, the nature of this circuit is so unique. We haven't had anything like this with DTM. No, we haven't. And I just kind of want to bring up the point situation once again. If uh, Siggy finishes P1, Rogers uh, and Yoyovsky P3, as we see a bit of concertina effect in towards Tel Mon there. Uh, so yeah, uh, Siggy P1 and Gajowski P3 will mean they're tied on 38 points. And I think um, yeah, uh, Siggy will come away with the championship because he, he would have a race win if, if they finish yeah. in that order. Absolutely. Spot on. That's great stuff there by you, Connery. Um, getting some maths right this year. That's brilliant. I'm um, trying. <laughs> yeah, doing a stellar <laughs> job. Makes it easier for me. It's a fair play. Morris Lerner then again. Just stuck in this uh, this washing machine cycle right now. I'm just trying to get to P7, and ultimately he's just going to get retaken on the oval part, and he's not even clear here, is he? Is he clear? Oh, he's just about clear. But now he's probably going to get re-overtaken here by uh, Sanchez, and all that hard work's going to go to waste here. So they, unless Sanchez does do the bump draft himself, Sanchez realised as well. Okay, so Sanchez has figured it out. He's like, if I can push him towards these three in front, we can maybe have a chance later on in this race. But as it stands, the job's being done superbly well by our front three. Again, they are currently 7 tenths separating the three of them. But they're 1.3 seconds ahead of Gogo Boldy. Uh, Mitchell De Jong's just dropped off the pace here as well. He's about eight, 7 to 8 tenths of a second behind Boldy now. Wisniewski's right up then behind De Jong. So that is a very, very good battle here. But look at the front three again. And uh, yeah, again, they're just bump drafting at this point. And you can see that Rogers is not getting involved in a double bump draft. He knows that then that does leave it too much to chance. He's going to maybe potentially make a move around the outside here of Yoyovsky. Can he pin into the apex here? I'll tell you what, Josh Rogers is going for it here. He is going for it. Can he make the move stick? They are side by side as they come up towards the horseshoe. Rogers, can he go let on the brakes? I think he might get boxed in by a race leader. And he does get boxed in. So now Yoyovsky is going to have to go the long way round to just maintain this position. But he will have the inside line for the next horseshoe here. Siggy trying to split them in terms of slipstreams, trying to help both of them. So indeed, it doesn't help one of them so he can then pull away but rogers did go for it and i knew there would be a, a, only a, a amount of time for it to happen and okay. rogers well he's looking to make the move here and i'm just struggling to say words yeah i mean it's not ideal for a commentator but we'll just continue on with it as joshua rogers very much looking to try and mix things in and amongst the uh the podium well finishers at this point but if there's an incident between any of these three there may be Jojo Baldi, Mitchell De Young, Wisniewski, Lona potentially can get themselves up there. But right now it is this three car breakaway. Ihan Yoski looking to the inside there for the bus stop chicane, but just going to duck back in line. He knows there are nine minutes left in this race, still a, a decent amount of laps to go. And he knows he perhaps has saved his DRS activations and can just use this slipstream and the DRS coming down towards the start finish line on the final lap, unless he goes for it this time around he does have a head of speed here but boop right into the rear bumper pushing Siggy along well I think uh, what made that decision for him there was that Rogers is now a little bit further behind um I, I feel like if Rogers was as close I think he goes for the overtake now 
Now, he knows that Rogers will take that opportunity. He's not going to play ball. Uh, but yeah, Rogers wasn't quite close enough there, and he knew that he was going to be safe into turn number one. But now, we're getting up towards the eight minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, it looks like uh, Huntaj has just got himself a uh, penalty for spinning another driver. But yeah, the front three then separated by very little here. Uh, Jack Heathley, E12. Now, Lerner, eighth position. So as it stands then, Kevin Siggy would finish second in the championship with Yuyovsky, the Macedonian, winning the day, winning the big prizes. But Josh Rogers is the one that can spoil his party. Siggy just needs to go out and win. Uh, that's the best he can do right now. Uh, and if Yuyovsky finishes in third position, then he'll win on countback. It'll be a tie points. Uh, Heinemann and Naji is being investigated for an incident as well. And Siggy, by the way, has now pulled out a very nice gap here. Again, he just seems to have that middle sector absolutely nailed. Yep, he has, and they're slowly but steadily trying to extend that gap back to P3, but Rogers just sitting in the slipstream, also the DRS activations and push the passes are coming into effect, keeping Joshua Rogers inside of this battle. So he's, he's really wanting to uh, try and mix things up here. Like I've said, the, this whole group has a, about a two and a half second gap over the uh, over the fourth place driver of Mitchell De Jong at the moment. Yeah, Yosti is going to continue the, uh, the bump drafting train. Looks like he is, but look at the double toe that Joshua Rogers is getting in that Coanda Sim Sports car. It just drags him all the way up towards these top two drivers. A couple of looks to the inside there for turn one, but that's a very, very risky move if you're going to go for it. Yeah, Rogers again uh, didn't decide to go for a move. Though. I think he could have done. He decided against it. So he's kind of refigured his plan now. And uh, again, probably just wants it to go down to the last couple of laps here. And then they all duke it out. And again, if Rogers does get ahead of Yoyoski, Yoyoski wouldn't be guaranteed the loss of the championship because, of course, if he gets ahead then of Siggy as well, it, it could change it. So Rogers could indeed break the hearts of Yoyoski and then go and heal that heart and break Siggy. So there's plenty of different things that can go down here. As again, they come through the midsection of this Daytona circuit and then they head back onto the oval once again. Again, it's very repetitive, but it's super, super interesting here. And actually, Siggy hasn't got out as far as he has done previously here. So Yoyoski might be forced into potentially making a move. And there you go. You can definitely tell that that's a Photoshop picture now we see him actually on camera to the right hand side. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, he's. I think that in his sim rig and uh, not showing any sort of sign of pressure at the moment um, in that RHG Esports car. Of course, that sim racing team started by the F1 driver, Roman Grosjean. You know, and, uh, you know, looking to try and bring home the glory. Uh, Yoyovsky at the moment, he's in the best position to be able to do so. Well, perhaps the best position will be P1 at the moment. That makes things a little bit safer. But look at the speed coming through. NASCAR turn four, and now here's the move. Siggy, was that strategic to actually slip in behind? Because he knows that he's not going to hold on to this uh, race win coming out of the bus stop on the final lap. So he's getting himself in a better position to get that run, to get P1. Yeah, he's absolutely done that. He, so he's decided to let them go and then just stay in behind here. So, well, like he's done that too early for me. Now, now he's done that. That will mean that Yoyoski's going to try that, surely. Yeah, the, 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 this is the type of weirdness that we see for draft wins at Daytona. Uh, usually that sort of awkward shuffling happens on the second to last lap. Maybe even coming up towards the entry to the bus stop on the final lap is when drivers just sort of tempt each other to go for the overtake so they can get the slipstream coming towards the start finish line. But I, I've never seen it this early on either. So it's, a, it's an interesting strategy for sure from uh, Kevin Siggy. Yeah, I think it's a mistake. I really do think that's a mistake. I think it's too early here. Uh, they are half a second separating the three of them, and that's the closest they've been all race, uh, especially coming through the midsection. Uh, we're on board there with Tommy Ostgaard, then, who is down at P21. But here we go, then. And what does Yoyovsky do? We won't make the move into the bus stop, that's for sure. But is he going to do what Kevin Siggy did, then? And uh, what's Rogers going to respond Ooh. to it? This is crazy. And the more they play uh, they play Tom Fallery like this, it gives Mitchell de Jong an opportunity to potentially close up as well. So DRS is going to be wide open then for Rogers and Siggy. Siggy's going to have the double toe. And well, now it becomes about the mind, the mind games they're going to be playing here. And Yoyoski then has got that inside line. And look at this, Siggy's just absolutely belting it up the inside then of Rogers. Rogers now sits into P3. And Rogers, well, he just took that, didn't he? It wasn't a case yeah. of fighting for that position. He's just like, yeah, I'm happy to take P3. So it's becoming interesting here. Rogers making a late lunge up the inside then of Siggy. And well, oh. this is what can happen. So putting yourself in that position now of P3, Siggy is, again, there's contact between the two. They're okay, but they've lost a bit of time to Yuyovsky. So for me, 
Siggy has put himself in this position, but look all of a sudden who is behind. Home soil, Mitchell oh. Dion. No, he's fine. Don't worry about that. Fine. That's a net code issue. He's good. And, you know, he's used to going sideways. He's probably quicker going sideways anyway. It's fine. But Mitchell de Jong now is involved here. And now he could be someone that decides how this championship goes. Yeah, that's the danger of trying to go for things too early here. You just slow each other down, especially coming in through the, the infield section, coming through turn one. It, it's just going to hemorrhage you time compared to those drivers behind. And now de Jong is definitely... Well, on the tail end of the slipstream here, and if he has DRS activations to use at the end of this race, he is going to be a factor as well. As we'll see the replay, Joshua Rogers looking to the outside. That's the sign that Kevin Siggy needed, that he just had to stick his nose in there, rob that second place away. Joshua Rogers just fine with that because he knows there are still laps to go in this race, and maybe P3 uh, might be the best position to be in coming towards the run to the line, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, you know that Yuyovsky and Siggy are going to be more calculated here because they genuinely can win this championship. But Rogers, and indeed De Jong, they can't. Unless Rogers, unless Siggy and Yuyovsky take each other out, with Lerner seventh, it might bring into play Rogers potentially winning it, actually. <laughs> so yeah, it does come down to whether the front two wipe each other out. But yeah, very interesting strategies here. Is Siggy maybe looking for a move up the inside of Yuyovsky? Rogers all the way around the outside, lay on the brakes there. Again very much used to uh, having to feather the throttle with the cars he's driving normally with the Porsches. They are not the greatest at feeling for brakes, that's for sure. Um, and indeed, he has worked that to his advantage there. And now he moves back up to P2. And there is Mitchell De Jong. Is there anyone else? Is Disney SD close enough? No, he's not. Nine tenths separates the front three. And well, we are going to end up with one more lap after this. So two laps remaining. Connery, this is going to go down to the wire. And anybody could win. You could genuinely cover these with a loincloth. But look, the situation is here for Siggy to win this. He, he needs to get the, the race win. He needs to have Yayovsky in third or lower. And uh, so he, he needs to get two passes done in the one minute and 30 seconds that we have remaining. He's got to hope that Yayovsky loses a position to Rogers. Uh, and well, to make it sure, uh, maybe even more than that. But uh, that's the margin right now. It's. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Mitchell De Young might be a bit of a spoiler here as well, as he's looking all over the back of Siggy, but stays in line towards the bus stop. Siggy made a little bit of a mistake out of the final horseshoe going on to the oval, but he's, again, luckily, the DRS and the slipstream gets him out of jail ever, ever so slightly here. And it all depends how close is Siggy to Rogers as to whether Rogers will pile the pressure on to go into P1 here. Yuyovsky will want him to go P1, and he's being pushed along here, and Yuyovsky won't want this. Yuyovsky will not want to be in P1 here. He pulls over, and he's, well, he's letting him go here. Is he not? No, he's not. He's decided to stay in the lead of this race, so very clever from him. No one wants to lead. That's the thing here. That's the strange <laughs> factor here that Daytona brings. No one wants to lead in the final lap of the race. So as it stands then, De Jong still not making a move here. Could De Jong make a, a Hail Mary three position overtake on the final lap here. We're about to find out as Yoski runs a little bit wide and this is where there might be some inverted commas now. <laughs> mistakes happening in the midsection of this circuit to give up a position. Um, but as it stands there, Yoski is going to be in the lead as they come up towards the oval section and this might be to his detriment. And yeah, it's, he's been sort of handed it, but ultimately the three behind they still got to try and negotiate each other. So maybe it's best to be in the lead here. I don't really know this what this situation is going to play out, how it's going to play out. Because Rogers, of course, is going to look to get ahead. But ultimately, he's then got to contend with Siggy and De Jong behind. I don't think anything's going to happen uh, before they come through the bus stop chicane here. Or is Rogers going to shock everybody and just go early? Will he go early here? Well, Siggy's going to go for a move around the outside. Yuyovsky, well, Yuyovsky's let Rogers go through, I think. He has. So now is Siggy going to come through as well? Siggy's made it as well. So now Yuyovsky's moved out to P3, but I think Rogers may have enough here. So Rogers, in all of that melee, may just about have enough. It's going to be close as we now come around the final corner. It's the long run. DRS will be activated for everybody. Look at Siggy closing in for the potential race when the line is just coming up around the corner here. Who's going to get the victory in this final race? And I tell you what, if Siggy gets here, it will be Siggy. Siggy's going to become our champion here of the Super Finale. He does. So Yuyovsky there makes the mistake. It's given Rogers the opportunity. But Siggy then went round the outside. And with Countback, we think he is going to be our champion. What a frantic finish. That was absolutely crazy. You could see the mindset there of Yuyovsky. He didn't want to back off too early because he was at risk of losing all those positions and making the, uh, you know, putting more cars between himself and Siggy. So it's such a dilemma for him later on in that race. And it's all come undone.
at the very end there. I have to say it's all provisional, at least right now. But Kevin Siggy might, on count back, be the winner of this Super Final. That's, yeah, um... That is incredible. It's incredible that it's that close. I got to say, though, by... Uh, with the with the calculations at the moment, sorry, I'm just getting them updated on my little spreadsheet here. It would be 38. No, it uh, it would be uh, yeah, absolutely 38 points apiece, at least by by my spreadsheet. And that race win might have just clinched it for Ziggy. Yeah, we'll take uh, Connery's mathematics with a fistful of salt. So we don't know exactly <laughs> who's won this championship. It is that crazy. Uh, like we didn't know who was going to win that race at the end and. Yeah, but it was a, a much more tactical race at the end there. Of course, Slipstream DRS being a huge factor. Daytona is one of those circuits where it's usually based on Slipstream as well. Uh, maybe not the 24 hours of Daytona. That's normally settled pretty, uh, you know, it's 24 hours. It's not a Slipstream fest uh, if we're going to be completely honest. But yeah, wow. Very fitting of the championship. Superb two races. <laughs> and we still don't know who's won. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's absolutely crazy. I, I'm pretty sure the stewards are working very, very hard behind the scenes right now to try and uh, try and look at the races, uh, you know, see if there's, uh, you know, potentially any penalties being applied. I don't see why they would be uh, coming towards the end of that one. But right now, they just have to make doubly sure uh, who our champion is here in the DTM Esports Super Finale. And I don't think we could have really asked, uh, could have really asked for a, a better ending to that one. Joshua Rogers just mixing things up there inside the top three. De Jong getting himself involved as well. So, uh, you know, a couple of spoilers when it comes to those drivers getting themselves involved in the thick of things, however much of an outside chance that they had. But there's the confirmation of the podium, perhaps the 1-3 that Kevin Siggy requires compared to his competitor, Abir Anjonovsky. Yeah, Kevin Siggy then taking the gold medal, taking P1. Joshua Rogers then picking up P2. And Erhan Yuyovsky with p3 which by our mathematics means that they've tied and on count back we think that potentially siggy has got the dub siggy then is the winner joshua rogers in second erhan yoyovsky is in third spot mitchell de Jong then with a great showing in race number two is on 12 points in fourth nikodem Wisniewski is in fifth morris lerner in sixth then gergo boldy in seventh alejandro sanchez eighth jacob brzezinski in ninth and then Michael Romanidis finishes in your top 10. And how crazy is it to think that coming into this, we were looking at Jack Keefley, we were looking at Moritz Lerner, and ultimately it's become about Yoyovsky and someone who wasn't in our DTM Esports Championship, Kevin Siggy. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, no stranger to race room here is, uh, is Kevin Siggy, but still, regardless... Uh, an absolutely fantastic performance uh, from him in this one. I'm just double checking everything because I'm super paranoid that I got things wrong, but it looks like it's absolutely fine. But, uh, uh, you know, that is a, a brilliant performance there. And there is confirmation of the tie and perhaps confirmation of the championship because with Siggy's race win that Yoyovsky does not have, that might be it. There we go. Well, that is the confirmation, ladies and gentlemen, that the DTM Esports Super Finale 2020 is going to go to Kevin Siggy. We then got Erhan Yoyovsky, who tied on points, but unfortunately, due to count back, is going to finish in second. Moritz Lerner then is going to add another podium to his DTM Esports Championship. Josh Rogers has just come in uh, from the iRacing scene for Coanda Sinsport and puts himself in a top four. Jack Keefley is going to finish in fifth position. We've got Mitchell De Jong in sixth, then Tim Yarshall seventh, Nikodem Wisniewski in eighth, Gogo Boldy in ninth, Jacob Brzezinski then is in 10th position. And let's check out who the top finisher of our pro drivers is. It's Rudolf Rin then. So that'll be on count back of results. Uh, Tim Heinemann then is in 14th. And then Sheldon van der Linde in 15th. And again, a huge shout out to those three specifically. They are at Hockenheim this weekend uh, in their respective championships, racing out for everybody's viewing pleasure this weekend. And actually, a huge thank you to every single driver who has taken part in this esports event. It's been an absolute classic. It's been a cracker. And it's just been fantastic to have the names that we've been mentioning all on one grid in 2020. Yeah, and uh, I hope this is a sign of events to come as well, because, you know, it's all well and good having these big championships on each platform where we'll see the same names at the top of the order every single time. But if you get everyone in one big mixing pot like this, that's where a lot of excitement can be had. And with the drivers so close as well, uh, it's absolutely incredible racing. So I'm hoping that we get to see more of these kinds of events that encourage drivers from all sims, all games to complete on this, compete on the same platform because we are one big community. We like to think, oh, we're all 
race room. We're all iRacing. We're all Forza guys. But, it, you know, we are all sim racing. And that's the message that I want everyone to take away from this. Yeah. Connery is one step away from holding up a placard at this point <laughs> with, with his protests. But that's enough of us for the moment because now we are, well, I say enough of us. It's enough of Connery. Sorry, Connery. I just realized I'm the interviewer again. Um, we're now going to go <gasps> and jump in with a little chat then with Josh Rogers. Uh, and well, let's see how he felt after that epic, epic Dino race. Hello, Josh. Can you hear me? Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Hey, there he is. Uh, a busy year for you this year uh, with another sim racing competition being involved in the DTM Esports Super Finale. How do you feel it went for you today? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess uh, lack of sim knowledge was uh, <laughs> was on the cards there. Um, I mean, Moritz was doing his best to help everyone, but I clearly just didn't read everything. So stuffed up the start on the first one. Launch control didn't quite get that right. Um, but, you know, from then on, I had a, had a great time. Um, initially in preparation, I wasn't enjoying it so much. It was very, very different to iRacing. But um, by the end, uh, it's, you know, it's a nice change. And uh, and I really did enjoy being part of this uh, part of this event for Scheffler Coenda Simsport. I thought you did very, very well. I've, uh, I've been, co I've commentated on you on uh, Formula E this year as well. You've been in the Porsche Cup. And you've done everything. You've had a, a fantastic year, and it's great to see you involved in multiple different sims as well. And you know, it takes a very special talent to be, you know, right at the top of your game on multiple sims, especially with the limited time you've had within race rooms. So yeah, my hat is tipped to you. How did it go in race number two? Talk us through the final cup. Actually, just talk us through the whole race because it was just crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Daytona is always one of those races where uh, you're always kind of constantly scratching your head almost, just trying to play out so many different scenarios in your head as to what could go what, what way. Um, you know, you're always trying to leave it to the last lap and ultimately here it was to the last run, DRS and push to pass obviously all comes into that as well. Um, so for us, really, ultimately, I wanted to be P2 uh, coming out of the bus stop with a, a big enough gap that I could draft up and uh and not have to overtake until until we got out of uh, oval four so that would have been like i don't know maybe half a second six tenths back probably roughly where kevin was to be honest that was perfect for him um but ultimately uh yeah i mean it's, it's really just all a strategy race uh daytona you're always trying to, to to kind of pick and choose your battles make sure that you're in the right position for the right time uh it's no different to like the indy 500 for example usually it always comes down to the last last few hundred meters so uh yeah you really got to kind of set yourself up and that was ultimately what that whole race was about uh, the whole time now uh, awesome stuff well i want to say uh on behalf of all of us here at dtm thank you very much for taking your time out and getting involved with this unbelievable superstar grid uh and your performance was absolutely exceptional and good luck for the rest of your year thank you have a good one There's Mr. Rogers. Uh, always cool, calm and composed. Very good on camera. Uh, and an absolute, you know a little bit more about him than I do, Connery. Mm. Uh, an absolute superstar in the making. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's already a superstar as far as the as, as iRacing is concerned. He, he had a bit of a struggle this year in the Porsche Esports Super Cup. You know, a couple of instances, especially towards the end of the season with his long-term rival, Maximilian Banneke, uh, resulted in Sebastian Job uh, taking the win of that championship. I would have loved to see Job in this race because that would have been a, a pretty fantastic affair as well. But yeah, Rodders, um, you know, he, he's had a pretty decent year and to, to get a good finish here today as well is, is just going to, you know, uh, you know, increase his, his confidence coming in towards uh, 2021 because uh, he has a, a couple of series that he's racing in very early on in the year that's uh, going to be um, pretty uh, important for him. So to be able to uh, get a good result and hopefully carry the momentum through, uh, that's going to be so important. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's, it's just really good to see, you know, again, he has had some disappointment this year, but he's still being given the opportunity, still throwing himself into these opportunities. And again, it's not like it has been done in previous years, like the growth of sim racing over the last nine months, let's say maybe a little bit less than that. We've gained five years, you know, we've, we've mm -hmm. increased by about five years, I would say in development uh, within sim racing. So you've not got long enough to be dwelling on your past performances because you're right into the next event very, very quickly. Yeah. It's very similar to a lot of other esports I can think of Counter-Strike, for example, they have events pretty much, you know, literally every single weekend, even, 
even when uh, you know when they could play on land they were still you know flying to different locations in the world you know you know playing the game that they love and you know th there's no reason why sim racing can't also be like that uh, maybe a little bit of a less intense schedule than Counter Strike, but still, you know, g going to these locations when we're allowed to do so uh, after all of this is over, and and uh, you know, for a lot of these drivers, it, it could be a career in the making. Absolutely. Well, you know, we've now got one of our other drivers. It is the Macedonian Mad Lad. We've got Erhan Yuyovsky. So let's go and have a little chat with him. Of course, going to be very disappointed, unfortunately, coming second back on Countback. But let's have a little chat then to Erhan Yuyovsky. Erhan, um, sure, you are a little bit disappointed with how it went, but ultimately you were brilliant today. It's just come up a little bit too short, but talk us through your experiences today. I don't know. I'm, I'm in shock. Uh, to be honest, uh, I wasn't uh, counting Sigi at all. I was just covering Moritz, and, and when I, I immediately opened the stream and you were talking about Sigi winning it, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, he outplayed me. GG to him. Yeah, well, this is not the first time you've met, is it? You raced against each other at the McLaren Shadow Finals last year, and he got the one up on you there as well, didn't he? Yeah, we have a lot of experience together. So uh, we, we know each other too well, but yeah, this time he came on top. Nothing I could do. I'm, uh, I'm lost for words be honest yeah, but this this will be the start of a of a really big rivalry moving forward over over the next decade or so you know you're both very very young men um i wouldn't take it to heart too much you know you've just performed to me and connery we're just out there watching uh as commentators like i've been watching your story for quite some time now we met last year as well and you're going from strength to strength like this is just the beginning for you so don't be too disheartened um what are your plans moving forward from this like obviously You've come so close to this one, but what are you going to be looking to go to next time? Mm -hmm. Well, tomorrow I have the other uh, GT Masters, and then on Monday I have uh, GT Pro and R Factor. So quite a lot going on lately. I would like to get some rest. To be honest, it's it's been quite stressful these past couple of months. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a, a strange one, that's for sure. It's not something we would have expected in January, uh, that is for certain. But it is ultimately a good thing. And uh, you know, from my perspective, Erhan, you're the future of sim racing. There's a, it's a select group of drivers that are the future, and a lot of them were in this race today. So I want to say a massive well done. I thought you did exceptionally well today. You're very, very unlucky, but the future's really, really bright. Thank you. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is Erhan Yoyovsky. You can just tell. Connery, that he's devastated. Yeah. He's absolutely devastated, but he's got to hold his head up high. Well, he, he was grinning and smiling before you gave him the news there, uh, I think, <laughs> with that situation. But uh, yeah, you can see, you know, he, he was completely gutted uh, about that. And it, it's one thing to, you know, lose an event like this. It's another thing to lose when you're tying on points at the end. And it's just the fact that Siggy got the race win is all that separates you. Uh, that is a really, really tough one. And uh, Yajowski, he will be able to bounce back from this. He'll be feeling bad perhaps for a couple of weeks. Uh, but it'll, you know, he's a very good driver. He's a very, very, very competent driver. And he deserves to be fighting up there with the best of them. It's just, unfortunately, this time around, the exact sequence of events at Daytona just didn't go his way. If he finished P2, he'd be champion. But P3, uh, you know, it, what can you say? And I think we're witnessing the transition of sim racing becoming a, a lot more professional than it's ever been. And I think that might be what was lacking from her hand. Like, you know, you would know that the Red Bull guys, the Coanda guys, they would have had someone in their ear telling them if they were in the position of her hand, mm -hmm. he would have known exactly the uh, ramifications of people finishing around. He would have known that Siggy he was a danger. And I just think he's, he's obviously there's not time between each race and normally a real world motorsport or a normal championship in sim racing. You've got a week between between or at least a day between races if it's on a weekend sometimes a couple of hours but here it was just race into race but you know can't blame anyone specifically but you know i think moving forward that's something he can learn from and improve on have someone in his ear making sure that they know the mathematics and know everything in terms of a championship if he gets into this position again and that's always something 
again, he's going to be devastated right now, very similarly to Keith mm. he was a couple of weeks ago. But he hasn't got long to think about it. He's got the R-Factor 2 Pro on Monday. He's got the Avec GT Masters tomorrow. Like, he hasn't got time to dwell on it. But ultimately, there is something you can take away from this in terms of improving. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's what you got to, you know, look at this like where if you're uh, on you've got you've got to look and say, well, the, the championship got away from me uh, in terms of this event. It's a very short championship, just two races, two qualifying sessions. You know, everyone's everyone's in it when, when the when the event's that short. So uh, it, it's kind of a bit of a misplay considering he wasn't even considering uh, Kevin Siggy's potential to win the event at the end of the day maybe he would have raced a little bit differently um if he knew that was the case he was focused he was tunnel visioned on the progress of Moritz Lona and Jack Hughley but it, and Kevin Siggy just came in swept it away from him with, with without him knowing until after the checkered flag yeah absolutely you said it there in a nutshell Kevin Siggy he managed to get the job done he's been renowned for doing that over the last 12 18 months it's all been about Kevin Siggy in the world of sim racing and now he's going to add another esports championship. So our official champion will be Kevin Siggy of the DTM Esports Super Finale. I've had an absolute blast with the DTM Esports and the Super Finale. It's been absolutely fantastic to be working on this. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure working with the production team in the background. So well done and thank you to all of them. It's been a pleasure working with DTM. And it's been an absolute honor to work with you, Connery. I feel like you are genuinely one of the very best in the sim racing space as Aww. it is right now. Um, so again, hopefully we work together at some point in the future, but it is goodbye from me and it is goodbye from Connery.